Good morning, this is Revisions on Genesis chapter 1. We have covered so far lectures 1, 2, and lectures 3. So let us revise lecture 1. And the other revisions will be on lecture 2 and 3. Lecture 1. We discussed that God's body makeup is unmeasurable. For both this universe and the universe of the angels, or what we call in the Bible the kingdom of God, and the universe that we live in, where we live, were created by the hands of God. Therefore, there is no space, matter, and time that would be able to accommodate this awesome, almighty, creator God for all eternity. It will never, ever be able, and that is spirit. Pare, that should be revised. Pare. In Pare, in lecture one, we discussed and explored God and his existence or body makeup. One, I stated that the astrophysicists have agreed that there are multiverses but different in types or models. Some have said that it is linear, while others go for parallel. I have stated my belief that it is parallel for God works in a sort of pyramid models. I even further stated that there are more than 100 universes based on the 100 atoms in which our earthly Adam's Earth is in this universe. And latest discoveries have proposed Earth types planets in other galaxies or universes. Second, some astrophysicists state that these multiverses are a continuous of universe in a linear form, and suggestion would both suggest that the Earth are in these linear lines of successive universe, which includes in parallel multiverses, and they are continuing or continue until infinity. Thirdly, I even stated that there is a possibility of 1,000 universes or multiples of 1,000 of universes thus in cluster forms of 100 each or in 1,000 each of a, in a cluster of universes. Fourthly, I have given also in lecture 1, 2 and 3 that the enormous universe of ours measurements as follows our universe where our solar system is in a galaxy, Milky Way galaxy, which exists with more than 200 billion galaxies of more than 200 billion stars in the galaxy. Some galaxies have more than 2 trillion stars, with a land of about 91 billion years or past 6. That is, 28 to times 10 to the power of 9 past 6. Fifth, this is just the observable universe length of 91 billion light years, for there is consensus among all scientists that the size of the entire universe is unknown. I have supplied in the lecture notes the source where you must refer to on the scientific uh, uh, influences. But let us just see how long or what is the diameter of the observable universe, though scientists agree that the size of this one universe is unknown. It is estimated that the diameter of the observable universe of ours is about 28.5 gigaparsecs. That is, 93 billion light years. 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of 23 kilometers, or 5.5 .5 times 10 to the power of 23 miles. That is a big universe. And if a spaceship would start today and take off, it would take eternity, and still it would not reach the edge of the universe. And I stated that when we pray, the power of prayer, the physics of prayer, defies physics, the natural laws of this universe, that it only takes second for your prayers, prayers to be answered. Whereas if you were to travel through space, and this entire universe, it will take eternity and still you would not reach for no spacecraft or space shuttle has the capability to travel even outside our solar system. Now, we have concluded in that lecture 1, 2 and 3, we have come to the conclusion that God cannot be measured 
or contained in these universes, nor can we quantify God in these creations of his multi verses. For prophet Isaiah has stated that all these were created with his hands and are in the palm of his hand. Therefore, these creations cannot contain God. Now, let us revise the conclusions are we found in lecture one as it is based in Genesis chapter one verse one. Let us I'm using New American Standard Bible version or NASB, the creation which is the subject. Verse one in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So first and foremost, creations of God in Genesis chapter one is basically Creation, this is the equation, creation is equal to space or heavens plus matter or earth including stars and galaxies at all. That is black hole, antimatter and white holes, everything there is. Plus time or in the beginning. Let me reiterate the equation again. Creations is equal to space or heavens plus matter or earth plus time or in the beginning so the equation in biblical and scientific scientific terms would be as following starting with the bible this is a bible equation creation is equal to heavens plus earth plus in the beginning that is creation of god so it is not god or equal to god equals heaven plus earth plus in the beginning in scientific term Creation is equal to space, that is heaven in the Bible, plus matter, that is earth in the Bible, plus time in the beginning, that is creation of God. So this creation, which constitutes space or heaven, plus matter or earth, plus time or in the beginning, cannot be God. It is God is outside of it. God created it. So the natural laws that constitutes this continuum of space, matter, and time cannot affect or has an effect on eternal God, this awesome, mighty God. Secondly, God therefore is not controlled or affected by creation and its natural laws and physics. And that is something I really admire about this awesome God. Thirdly, the natural laws that is physics, chemistry, and biological laws of both our universe and the angelic universe or kingdom of God cannot affect God for it is God's creation and only existed because he created it and thus God, the creator, Elohim, or the Trinity God is independent of these forces or laws or equations for it was it is its creations. God created this creations which constitutes space, matter, or time in, in the biblical term as we have found out in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. It is heavens plus earth plus beginning in the beginning which is time which is equal to creations of God and God created these things. So they do not, they are not part of God. So they are not God for God to be affected by it. Fourthly, therefore, the components of these universes are oblivion to God. That is, it has no bearing to God or to his existence, but is controlled and manipulated only by God. And sometimes, by the command of God, angels, holy angels, do affect or change or manipulate these creations. Thus, fifthly, thus we have seen in this conclusion in part three lectures, three lectures that time has no bearing on in or with God, for it is his creation that St. Peter said, stated in Second Peter chapter three, verses eight, in the New American Bible Standard Bible version. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. Time is nothing to God. Time doesn't affect God. 
So that is something humans must bear in mind. Out of this fifth conclusion, we can say that therefore that all matter and all energy and all time there is in this creation, in these universes, whether it's 100 universes, two universes, 1,000 universes, or classes of universes of hundreds or 1,000s, has its effect only in the universe and its components and the rest of creations and creatures, therefore has no bearings or bearings or relevance with God according to the above verse of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. I hope this, this has cemented and we have built a foundation of who God is. Therefore existence in this universe which is made up of matter, that is galaxies, stars, planets, and etc., with its energy, plus the space that they are hung in of its existence, have no effect on God with its time, his existence, or his living, or his will act. Or ultimately, this matter, space, and time are products of God's creative powers, so God is independent of these creations. And he is not within this creation, thus outside of this creation, and thus superior to it in terms of its existence, natural and physical laws. What a revelation. The sixth point of our conclusion we can derive, he does not need time. He doesn't need space, he doesn't need matter or this creation to exist nor survive. Therefore, since time is created by God, thus God has no reference time of existence. Nor does God have a reference point of existence, for matter was created by God. And finally, God does not need space to exist and survive, for God created space, the heavens, and the matter. Therefore, God, the seventh conclusion we can draw from this, just one verse of Genesis chapter 1, God cannot be contained or be given about for space was created by him, therefore he is not limited in his existence by time, space, and matter. That is in the galaxies, earth, and universes. So they cannot contain him, for out of him he produced this. He is bigger than these creations, these universes combined. Until eternity, we cannot contain God. But B, we have seen in lectures, two and three that I have, now this is a revision, a revision on lecture two, part B of lecture four is the reason on humans and angels body component before the fall. Since God, existence cannot be determined by the creation, existence of needing time space for matters to exist, therefore God is not dependable on this equation, but the creation depends on God and its natural laws to exist and survive. That brought us to lectures 2 and 3, which will be revised and summarized under part B of this lecture. It is wonderful to see that we are serving a God that has no limitation. Note on lectures 2 and 3 from this revision, there were two creations as the text in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 presents. Let us see. The first stage of creation was both the universe and all its matters and that is the stars and galaxies. In the beginning, God created heavens that includes our earth and this universes and the galaxies and even the angels. We saw and these two creation, in the first stage of creation, was both universes, both angelic and this universe that we exist in as humans. Both have separate physical and natural laws that we have seen. That is the reason creations and creatures in the first universe that we live in cannot see spirit beings, angels. They have a different physical and natural laws and body components. We have concluded, we have seen that, we have discussed and we have concluded. 
first point on this first stage of creation. We have covered in lecture 2 and 3 that Lucifer and the angels, both holy and evil, were created complete in seven days, billions or trillions years ago. So the seven day period in a week was from eternity before creation in this universe of Adam and Eve. Both creations were done in seven days and the weekly cycle was determined before at the beginning of creations, billions or trillions of years ago. Secondly, we have found out in lectures 2 and 3 that 99 sons of God who were not angels who re rejoiced when Job was when Job said the earth was created and Adam was created. They sang for Job. They were permanent immortal. They were permanent, they had permanent immortal angelic body type is Adams because they did not fall to Satan. They were created in the sixth day of one week after the other universes and its earths were created to provide survival needs to the body of his sons of God like ours or earthly Adam. Thirdly, we found out and we, and we concluded that our universe in which God created the under earth and its hundred Adam created just more than 6,000 years ago were created in seven days. Six days they were created. On the seventh day, God rested. We will talk about this later because it's one of the gifts in lecture five. The third point that we came to that Genesis chapter one, verse one in the beginning, our universe in which God created the hundred earth and the hundred Adam just more than... Th uh, 6,000 ago. So, that is what we want to uh, reach and want to see. I'll give me time to check on on, on the necessary lecture notes so that you can have them. So, our universe was the only one not developed and thus a similar creation week of seven days took place to establish the constitution of heaven. Trillions of years, billions or trillions of years ago when Lucifer and the holy angels were created in that universe, which we call the kingdom of God. I merely stating it is the angelic universe for nothing, no abode, no universe can contain this mighty awesome God. So let me say again. So our universe was the only one not developed, and thus a similar creation week of seven days took place. This is in verse two, where the Holy Spirit hovered, for the earth was void. The constitution of heaven to the last hundred had them, so as not to be naive of Lucifer and be successful, just like the other ninety-nine Adams who sang with joy in Earth's creation this week especially our earthly Adam. We must always remember that even our universe with its observable galaxies are only 200 billion galaxies or more. So when scientists say it is infinite, it means we may never know the limits or measurement of our current universe. And imagine the universe of the angels, or as the Bible puts, as the kingdom of God, of which I stated no two universe of ours. And the angels can contain or even if we add another 99 universes where there are 99 other atoms were created who did not fall would still contain or provide a boat for this awesome creator redeemer god we call elohim praise god i serve an infinite god an unmeasurable god so i propose now that there were two creations mentioned in the Bible, and there were other creations of the respective 99 other Adams in a cycle of seven days of weak creations to determine the constitutions of God's kingdom on all these universes to prove that Satan's accusations of God as a tyrant God is not true. They willingly and they lovingly obeyed the Ten Commandments of God, for it is, for it is the character of God. God is love, and the Ten Commandments is based on the first four laws as your love to God and your love to human beings. The first four laws on Ten Commandments is how 
to respond lovingly and willingly to the commands of God. It shows that you love God from all your heart and with all your mind and all your power, with the same intensity that you love your neighbors. So the Ten Commandments, when God said in Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, let us create them in our image. It is the character of God to love God perfectly and to love humans perfectly. What? A heaven awaits us where love permeates and resonates and vibrates the foundations of heaven. Hallelujah. Therefore, Saint Peter correctly said or said it right. No eyes, no ears, no words can explain the mysteries of creations and what is in store for us worldly and earthlings what god and jesus are preparing for us in the universe of the angels and the other beauties of the other 99 other adams that did not fall to satan before we come back here after 1000 years in heaven where eternity and eternal life will begin and that is revelation 31 and 22 i just can't wait no wonder john the revelator said in the ending of his book in Revelation, Lord, come quickly. Let's go back to creation on lectures 1 and 2. Adam and Eve were created temporary immortality body type of angels, so it was temporary. This, we have, we have gone through it. They were covered with this light, this nuclear energy, temporary. Their body makeup are more stable and constant than the nuclear energy of our sun and stars. Therefore, they control the nuclear fusions and fusions of stars, thus much more complex in nature and superior to our suns and stars nuclear energy of existence, and which the Bible with Jesus could only explain, for God is spirit, and the angels are spirit. They are in another, different, more stable, more perfect nuclear energy, which is that light. When they fell, they lost this unique body type of temporary immortal, immortal body type of angels. That's why they saw them, that they were naked. When God removed, or should I say, when they sinned. So sin takes away the presence of God. The temporary immortality. Oh, what? said pity and for disobeying God and succumbing to the deceptions of Lucifer. They fell and lost this unique body of temporary immortal body type of angels. Just like Lucifer and the holy angels when they were created billions or trillions years ago were of temporal immortal body type of angels. However, when they sinned, Lucifer and his evil angels lost this temporary immortal angelic body type but maintain their spiritual nuclear energy body type but it was mortal that one day they would die just like humans will be dead and not immortal like god and like holy angels as malachi chapter 4 verse 1 to 4 to 3 that a day of god's wrath will burn up everything lucifer to stubble, to ashes, and will be blown away. It it it, it, na, it negates, it's, it nullifies, it falsifies that hell is eternity. No, it falsifies that. So when you die, you rest in the in, in, in the grave and wait for Jesus to come because there's no immortal soul or spirit living there. That is another subject matter that we will deal later on. So, the eternal fire in hell is a figurative speech in which the rubbish dump outside of Jerusalem bur burns to eternity or when nothing else is left to burn, for everything is blown away after they are burnt. So it is in this earth that that is done. What a deception. Lucifer has successfully done to most of Christian churches. 
The other thing that we should be wary of is that angelic body type are far more superior than our suns and stars nuclear energy physiology. Both holy and evil angels are spirit or in nuclear energy type of body, but only holy angels have been have been granted permanent angelic immortal body type, whereas Lucifer and his angels are spirit but not immortal. So God will destroy them like stubbles of corns or wheats as it burns everything until nothing else remains. So the eternal fire in El is, El is a figurative speech in which the rubbish dump outside Jerusalem, as I stated, burns to eternity, or where nothing else is left to burn, for everything is blown away, for it is burnt. We humans have five senses, we have seen in lecture three. Three dimensional views with four dimensional concept of existence. Holy angels live in a 10 sense, six dimensional views, but live in a seventh dimensional concept of existence. Evil angels have forfeited that, have been downgraded between holy angels and mortal sinful humans. They have a fourth dimensional views, but live in a fifth dimensional concept of existence. Therefore, Lucifer will be destroyed into ashes and blown away by the wind, for he and his fellow evil angels have no immortality or immortal bodies to remain burning forever in hell. Evil angels have, as I said, fourth dimensional views, but live in fifth dimensional concept of reason. Therefore, godly God is immortal, immeasurable, unfathomable. For nothing of this creation of his can contain him, for they do not have any bearing on him, for he created it himself. He is not limited by space, matter, time. Thus he is unlimited in space, matter, and time, and also in energy. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, Mawson. No wonder angels fall before you in prostrate and worship you and say, holy, holy, holy for praise and honor is yours. So our next lecture, that's lecture five, that I'll be doing tomorrow, we'll be discussing in brief the gifts that were given to Adam and Eve in lecture five. Briefly, these are the following subjects and doctrines to be discussed in lecture five, which are also gifts given and found in Genesis one and two, before the fall. So this is, the con this is the constitution, this is the norms, this is the blueprint of eternal life that Adam and Eve had forfeited. First, our universe and galaxy and earth and its environment. Secondly, life. What is life in eternal life? We will find that it is in Genesis chapter 1 and to chapter 3. What is marriage? What is one of the gifts? So life is a gift. The universe is a gift. Sabbath is a gift. Temporary eternity is a gift. It must, should have been eternal for permanent and temporal immortal body types. I wish you all the best. And may God bless you. And may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit enlighten our minds. And only think of the things in heaven which will make us happy. And that is our living hope of Jesus coming to take us to heaven. Paul says that we are already citizens of heaven. That is in Philippians 3.20. In Colossians 3 it says, we await Christ from there. When we are in Christ, when we give our lives to Christ, our life are hidden in Christ in heaven. So our eternity, our destiny, is being confirmed when we laid our lives at the foot of cross. I laid my life in the foot of a cross exactly 26 years ago on January 29, 1992. May God bless you all as we listen until this song finishes up.